You're about to learn more about some of the most emblematic buildings and monuments in the world and a bit of their history. St. Basil's Cathedral. Its history started in 1555 by the order of Ivan IV, a.k.a. Ivan the Terrible. In celebration of the defeat of Kazan, the last remaining grip of the Mongol Empire on European lands. Historians claim that Ivan the Terrible blinded the St. Basil's Cathedral architect right after the construction was finished to prevent him from building another cathedral as magnificent as this. The State Historical Museum is the largest national museum of Russia. Its collections have been growing for more than 100 years and now contain over 4.5 million items. Architect Vladimir Sherwood and engineer Anatoly Semenov created the building of the museum on Red Square. It was open to visitors in June 1883 during the celebrations of Emperor Alexander III coronation. When the new museum opened on Fifth Avenue in 1959, neither its founder Solomon R. Guggenheim nor the architect Frank Lloyd Wright were able to attend. Solomon had died in 1949. Wright died six months before seeing the most important work of his career completed. Its construction began on March 17, 1930. Occupying a central spot on Fifth Avenue, it is to be the world's first 100-plus story building. The framework was built at a rate of four and a half stories per week. In 1931, in a record-breaking one year and 45 days, construction of the 102-story building is completed. King Kong debuts in New York City on March 2, 1933 putting the Empire State Building front and center for one of cinema's most famous films. The Brooklyn Bridge looms majestically over New York City's East River, linking the two boroughs of Manhattan and Brooklyn. The bridge's construction took 14 years and cost $15 million, more than $320 million in today's dollars. On May 24, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge opened connecting the great cities of New York and Brooklyn for the first time in history. It is slightly over 1.1 miles long. It's a gift to the United States from the people of France to commemorate 100 years of Franco-American friendship. It also commemorates the centennial of America's independence, formerly known as Liberty Enlightening the World. It was sculpted by Frederick August Bartholdi and the framework was designed by French engineer Gustave Eiffel. There are 354 steps to the crown. It is 305 feet 1 inch from the ground to the tip of the torch. The White House spans six floors and includes 132 rooms and 35 bathrooms, 28 fireplaces, 8 staircases, 3 elevators, John Adams was the first president to live there, not George Washington. Although Washington was responsible for commissioning the construction of the White House, choosing the site and approving its design. Washington's term ended in 1797, three years before the White House was completed in 1800. President Theodore Roosevelt officially gave the White House its current name in 1901. The Lincoln Memorial was built to honor Abraham Lincoln, the United States 16th president. It's located in the National Mall in Washington, D.C. at the western end. Its construction began on February 12, 1915, on Lincoln's birthday. It was dedicated on May 30, 1922. Henry Bacon designed the monument as a Greek Doric temple-style building with 36 columns and Lincoln statue inside the temple itself. The statue of Lincoln was designed by Daniel Chester French and carved from marble by the Picciarelli brothers. 
There's a very fun miniature golf course as well that you can enjoy with your whole family. The United States Capitol building houses the meeting chambers of the Senate and the House of Representatives, the two bodies that compose the legislative branch of the American government. The U.S. Capitol length from north to south is 751 feet and four inches. Its height above the baseline on the east front to the top of the Statue of Freedom is 288 feet. Its construction began in 1793 and has been completed several times. The original building was finished in 1826. The most recent and largest ever addition to the Capitol is the Capitol Visitor Center. It was completed in 2008. The Washington Monument, designed by Robert Mills and eventually completed by Thomas Casey and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, honors George Washington at the center of the nation's capital. Built in the shape of an Egyptian obelisk, evoking the timelessness of ancient civilizations, the Washington Monument embodies the awe, respect, and gratitude the nation felt for its most essential founding father. When completed, the Washington Monument was the tallest building in the world, at a little over 555 feet. It is the current seat of the German Parliament. On June 29, 1884, the foundation stone was laid by Wilhelm I at the east side of the Konigsplatz. Before construction was completed by Philip Holtzman, A.G., in 1894, Wilhelm I died in 1888, the year of three emperors. It was built from 1910 to 1930 by order of German Emperor William II. According to plans by Alfred Messel and Ludwig Hoffmann in strict classicism style, the lack of foundations caused damage to the building, so it had to be demolished before World War I. It is an 18th century neoclassical monument in Berlin. Built on the orders of Prussian King Frederick William II, after the temporary restoration of order during the Batavian Revolution. It was built on the site of a former city gate that marked the start of the road from Berlin to the town of Vandenberg and the Havel. The history of the construction of the new National Theater, later called the Palace of Fine Arts, is complex and it has a unique dynamic. Two important periods in the history of the nation define it. The Porfirio Diaz regime and the Mexican Revolution. The works began in 1904 with the aim of finishing it in four years. However, budgetary and technical problems were delaying its conclusion. After the outbreak of the revolution in 1910 and the worsening of the economic situation in the country, Adamo Boari, architect in charge of the building, returned to Europe in 1916. The Palace of Fine Arts was completed by the architect Federico Ernesto Mariscal on March 10, 1934, roughly about 30 years later. De la Independencia. Its official name is the Monument of Independence, mounted in 1910 to commemorate the centenary of the independence of Mexico by the then President Porfirio Diaz. The first stone of this structure was laid on January 2, 1902, by General Porfirio Diaz. Inside it, he put a golden chest with the certificate of independence and some coins of the time. 
everything seemed to be going from strength to strength, until 1906, the engineers realized that one of the sides of the monument was sunk. And even though the foundations and 2,482 feet high stones were already in place, everything built had to be demolished to start over. Its construction began in 1522 as the second private residence of Hernán Cortés on part of the Moctezuma Chocoyotzin Palace. At the end of the conquest, Hernán Cortés received the Palacio de Moctezuma as a reward. After selling it to the crown, the property was used as a mansion for the viceroys and since then, its building has been the residence of some presidents and the ceremonial precinct of the executive power. Pedro Ramirez Vasquez was the architect and designer of this building. He also has to his credit the creation of other emblematic venues such as the Azteca Stadium, the Museo del Templo Mayor, and the National Museum of Anthropology. On October 12, 1976, the building was completed. The Star of Puebla is a tourist Ferris wheel located next to the Angelopolis Shopping Center in the so-called Linear Park. The star was inaugurated on July 22, 2013, and received the Guinness records for being the largest transportable observation wheel in Latin America. The Star of Puebla is a wheel of German manufacture. It is called transportable because at any time it can be disassembled and placed elsewhere. It is 256 feet high, 243 feet in diameter, 54 cabins which fit eight passengers each. Created by architect Pedro Ramirez Vasquez and inaugurated in 2005, it was recently remodeled, replacing the facade that contained a composition considered the largest Talavera work in the world with a large stained glass window. It is the most important stage in the state. All kinds of shows and events take place here, such as exhibitions, film premieres, book presentations, international festivals, corporate events, theatrical works, and more. The International Baroque Museum was inaugurated on February 2016 with the aim of making the complex Baroque identity known through plausible works. It is a space that allows the manifestations of this artistic trend in all dimensions of man, with the purpose of discovering its folds, tensions, and theatricality. It opened in 2016 on the tour in the cable car cabin, you can enjoy panoramic views of the city, in addition to recognizing emblematic places of Puebla, such as the Metropolitan Cathedral, Estrella de Puebla, Cuauhtémoc Stadium, Los Fuertes de Loreto y Guadalupe, Puebla Convention Center, Popocatépetl and Iztaccíhuatl Volcanoes, and many more. One of the towers is 124 feet high, the other one 198 feet high. The length between the two towers is 2,257 feet, and the transfer between both towers lasts five minutes. The cabins fit 22 passengers each. The cost of the single trip is $1.50, and round trip $2.50. On December 5, 2013, the state government announced the remodeling of the Cuauhtémoc Stadium, and a year later, the works began. The reopening party was on November 18th, 2015. It can sit 51,726 people. 
Its function is to carry out the attention of procedures and services, health complaints, and administrative resolutions in an agile, clear, timely, transparent, and effective way. Bring the attention of procedures and services to each of the health jurisdictions in order to save time and money for users. The Sanctuary of Nuestra Señora de los Remedios is a Catholic temple located at the top of the Great Pyramid of Cholula in San Andres Cholula, Puebla. Its construction began in 1594, although the temple of that time was partially destroyed by an earthquake in 1864, the year in which it was rebuilt. Later studies recognized the intention of the builders to place it on top of a great Cholultecan structure as a way of highlighting the beliefs of Catholicism over the old Mesoamerican beliefs, originating syncretic practices. I'll tell you something, many of the people who made the creation and construction of these icons possible, never saw them finished. Their time came before seeing their finished works. However, each one of them went ahead with their vision. There were plenty of obstacles on the way. In short, moments of deep frustration, just like everyone else. But above all, there was the desire and the relentless will to achieve their goals. Nobody had anything to prove. Each and every one of them was already great in their own respect. They never gave up. And that is why today we remember their names and their works speak for them beyond the grave. Only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. It's about seeing what doesn't exist yet. I know something about you without knowing you. You've got greatness within you. You are capable of doing things that others can't even begin to imagine. Bishop Juan de Palafox y Mendoza held the first Mass on April 18, 1649, with the facades and towers still missing. The construction of its towers took almost two centuries. The North Tower was started at the beginning of the 17th century, and it was completed in 1678. And the South Tower was finished 90 years later, in 1768. These towers are the tallest of the Latin American cathedrals, at more than 230 feet high. The current building in the Elizabeth architectural style with influences from the neoclassical and the Italian Renaissance began in 1887 and was completed in 1906. According to the project of the English architect Charles T.S. Hall, the Loreto and Guadalupe forts are old military buildings found in the city of Puebla. Originally, they were chapels built on top of an Acuayametepec hill which were reconstituted at the beginning of the 19th century as fortifications for military purposes. They served as the main stage, both in the battle 
and in the siege of Puebla during the second French intervention in Mexico. I hope you enjoy this video. There is a lot more to come. So, stay, stay tuned. tuned.